Hello and welcome to a basic Java tutorial on loops. I'm going to cover two different loops in Java today, the while loop and the do while loop. As you may be familiar with these loops, what they do is control the flow of your program through some conditions. And they have a very subtle difference, so I'll describe that in this interaction. I have written a basic Java class called loops and have one static void main method which again is just a block for procedural code. I have created two variables an integer counter set to 1 and an integer limit set to 10. I'm first going to write a while loop which is the more common loop in Java and the syntax is to write while and then in parentheses you have a condition that you want to check in order to execute the block of code. So I'm going to write the condition counter is less than limit. This means that as long as this value 1 that's currently in counter is less than 10, then we're going to execute the code that's inside this block. So we're going to print out counter is and then write counter. And this is the syntax for printing a variable on the command line, system out print line, and then um, you'd see that the text is covered in quotes. And then I have this plus, which means to concatenate that string of text plus this variable that's here, counter. And Java is able to understand if that's an integer or long or float or string or whatever it is, it will interpret that into the command line and print out the value that it knows how to. Have to end everything with a semicolon. Then the next thing I'm going to do is increment the counter. This is one way of incrementing using a double plus plus. This means that the value of counter will be incremented by one. So if it goes through this first time, it will change the value of counter to two. And then at the end of this block, it will go back to the beginning and check this while condition. So the way that you could read this is to say that um, we start out with a counter of 1, limit of 10. It checks that 1 is less than 10. That's true. So it goes through and checks, uh, prints out the line, counter is equal to 1, and increments it to 2. It goes back up here and checks again. 2 is less than 10. And it goes through, and you can see the pattern that it would go through. Um, we'll go ahead and save that and compile it. and execute it. And you can see counter is equal to 1 all the way up to 9. And so once it get, got to the 9 and printed 9 out and incremented it to 10, went back up here to the loop and said 10 is less than 10. That's not true. So it would not execute the block then. You can also put conditionals in here such as adding a less than or equal to, which would mean that if we did the same thing again, it would then print out the 10th iteration. We refer to that as an iteration within the block of code. How many times is the loop iterated upon? We've uh, seen a for loop in a previous example, and the while loop is similar to that. It just has a different construct and different syntax and way it works. So the one subtle difference in the do while loop is that it's uh, the order of the block and the conditional are basically reversed. So if I were to say do and then have a block of code. At the end, I could have a while counter is less than limit. And I do have to end it with a semicolon because it's at the end of this statement. Now, well, we've seen here that the counter went up. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to just a less than. The counter went up to 10. So if the counter went up to 10, then that while loop that's done prior to the condition, which is done prior to the block being executed, would not pass once the counter was incremented to 10. The difference in the do while loop is that the do indicates that we want to execute the block first and then check the condition. So if we entered this block, this do while, with a different value, we would get a different result than the, while, the traditional while loop. So I'm going to execute it this way. We have started with a counter of 1. It's been incremented up to a value of 10. And our while loop would have stopped. And now we get into this do while block. 
and let's see how it performs then. So one thing I'm going to do also, just so it's easier to see, is I'm going to print out some text in the middle here. So that we can see the difference. Because I noticed that when I ran it, it didn't look very different. But now you notice that start of do while loop executes, and then the value of counter at this point is 10. So we go through and we print counter, we increment it to 11, and then we notice that 11 is not less than 10, so we do not execute this loop again. But the interesting thing to see is that it did not stop on the do while when the value was 10. Once it entered at 10, it'll execute and then check. So note the difference in those things. Another interesting um, aspect of this, you can, um, set different types of conditionals in here. I mentioned the less than or equal to. Um, you can also have counter is not equal to. Um, this would indicate that um, as long as counter was not limit, so if it were either greater than limit or less than limit, it would execute. So if we do the same thing, The result turns out the same as the less than, but the difference is that if we were to enter a value of, let's say, 11, we would run into a different type of issue with this while loop. And we would enter an infinite loop, because if we start at 11 and we continue to increment counter, we would never get to the value of uh, counter and limit being equal. So I'll show you that and what that does to your program. It's not a good thing in a Java program, but note that it will just keep going and eventually it'll run out of memory and give you an error. My machine has quite a bit of memory on it, so it probably won't stop for a while. It would just continue going on and on until it ran into some sort of a system resource limit. But you can see that it will continue to increment and keep going and would never stop until it ran into its own sort of environmental problem on that machine. So note that with loops you do have to be careful because you can get into what we call an infinite loop where there is nothing in your conditions that will stop the loop from executing. It's important to have a condition that makes sense, a condition that will meet all of your needs. So in this episode you learned about loops two in particular, the while loop and the do while loop. And the difference between those being that the while loop has the condition on the loop in front of the block of code and the do while has the condition after the block of code. This is an important distinction to recognize the order of how your uh, code will flow. And they can be utilized for two you know, very different things. Um, but just recognize that you have those two concepts at your disposal. Um, you will be asked to choose a loop to write a program, and we'll test your knowledge of uh, these two concepts and to see how well you can write your own class on a loop. Uh, and then questions that will cover the differences in these two. You can look up those questions under Java uh, loops, while and do while. Um, on the website, and then an assignment as well.